Hey everyone, uh, let's welcome Sergey Gorbanov from Axelar for his talk. All right. <clears throat> hey everyone, how's it going? Awesome. Grab your seats if you want. If not, then that's fine. Uh, so great to be here, and uh, thanks so much for inviting me um, to talk about Axelar. So first time in Amsterdam, and I was taking a taxi to the to the hotel, and so I learned the most important thing about Amsterdam, and apparently is that you should not go to a coffee shop uh, because they put interesting things in your coffee there, and you should only rely on Starbucks. Um, following that, the driver told me that he was born in Amsterdam, raised in Amsterdam, it's the happiest place in the world, and he would never leave. So now we know why. Awesome. Um, so hope you had some good coffee. Let's get going. Um, super excited to tell you about Axler. If you don't know, and the one-liner, if you need to remember, think about secure cross-chain communication. On that note, um, let me quickly you know, mention or introduce the team if you're not familiar. Um, so we have a pretty uh, amazing team, super proud of a lot of the folks that are working with us. Uh, the team comes with uh, deep backgrounds in cryptography, distributed systems, kind of consensus. We designed and worked on many protocols over the years from you know, Algorand to kind of standardization of crypto protocols like BLS, uh, kind of hyperledger optimizations. Um, um, nuclear fusion and things like that. So pretty deep uh, team in the uh, technology space and uh, super pr proud to, to work with all of the guys. All right, um, I think on that note, very briefly, um, I think this is all familiar to many of you, but we know that the world has gone uh, multi-chain over the last few years, right? I think, you know, if you look at the evolution of um, the ecosystem, it all began with a couple of foundational projects, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Our early applications were built around those, of course. Um, and then we quickly realized that on their own, those platforms could not scale, right? So over the years, we saw an array of other platforms entering the market, many of them optimized for unique technical capabilities or go after specific markets or use cases. And I would say only over the last year or so, um, the applications now embracing the multi-chain ecosystem and thinking about how do you leverage and build on top of these newer platforms and uh, how do you leverage their technical capabilities um, or uh, markets that they're targeting. So lots of applications are um, going cross-chain these years. Now, the unfortunate side, of, uh, side effect of all this is that the space continues to fragment, and it continued to fragment over the last year or so. And uh, one of the reasons is um, kind of a lot of ad hoc solutions, in particular bridging technologies that have been rolled out uh, to solve some of the interoperability issues that we're seeing, right? Um, Basically, I think the, the way to characterize a lot of the bridging tech aids mostly been centralized, except for you know, a couple of exceptions. And so you see a lot of the hacks um, over the years where you know, a few nodes get corrupted um, or just bad and poor, uh, poor security models. Uh, the second uh, problem with a lot of the technologies is that they have limited uh, what I call pairwise or one-to-one -one connectivity, right? So again, like the stacks have been designed and everything has been built to connect you know, A and B, which, which is great, but you know, we're in a, in a world and an ecosystem where we want to be able to connect you know, many to many uh, different ecosystems and continue to scale you know, and support millions of chains and you have to kind of design the stack uh, from the right approach. So, uh, whenever you know, I use one of the existing bridges or uh, kind of think about um, the space in general, you kind of look at this picture, right? And uh, I don't know about you, but I'm just hoping that I don't end up like on the, on the bridge on the left, right? Um, so that's the state of the art. Awesome, so what do developers actually want? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the developers want platforms, not Silas, right? So um, as a developer, you want to pick a platform where you can build the best application for your user experience while still being able to leverage and compose and interact with all other ecosystems. Okay, And so that's what Axel Stack allows you to do, is as a developer of your application and asset, you can make the best decision for yourself where to go without having to think about you know, losing liquidity or losing composability. And so the Axler stack enables you to perform um, secure cross-chain messaging, you know, asset transfer, contract calls, and anything else you can think about. 
The other big point that I want to um, kind of mention is that at the very end of it, um, I really don't think the users care about bridging technology or interoperability or too much what chain they're on. Okay, as a user, really what you have to do is you, 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 know, you have an asset, you see an application, you just go ahead and use it. And so we're building the, the stack with the user simplicity in mind to think about what are the right layers that you have to provide and build in order to enable simple one-click interactions across the ecosystem. Right? As a user, I should be able to go and use the application and I have to put trust in the application issuer and developer to build on the best and secure platform, their application, I have to put, you know, a trust that they're using the right interoperability or bridging technologies, but as a user, you know, all those things, uh, there's no way you can, you can think about those things, and so that decision has to be kind of a, uh, relied uh, on the developers to do this. Simplicity is one of the core things that we need to get to in order to go to the next level of adoption for the blockchain ecosystem, and today it's, uh, it's just uh, horrible and painful. All right, awesome. So on a high level, let me introduce you kind of to the Axler stack. Uh, there are a couple of layers, but uh, let's start from uh, kind of the top. Going back to the premise that we wanted to start with, we want to enable applications to be built anywhere they want to be built, right? So you can go and build on Ethereum, on Avalanche, on Cosmos, on, on Polkadot, and um, we'll help you uh, communicate with all other ecosystems through a universal set of APIs and SDKs um, that you can interact with. You can think of it as an application. You can call a message to a specific you know, router or a gateway, which is a smart contract on the chain. Um, from there, underneath it, there is the Axler sort of transport layer and the gateway protocol that would serve the purpose of you know, finalizing messages, routing them, executing them, kind of delivering where they need to go, um, and then returning the result back to the application. Right. So um, underneath all of this, the Axel network itself is a decentralized proof of stake network. So it's based on a Cosmos SDK. Uh, so you can, um, you know, anybody can join, run as a validator, participate in the consensus, and uh, have full security of proof of stake model uh, back in the uh, the transport layer itself. All right, so what are kind of some of the key ingredients of the Axel network? Um, there are a couple of big uh, components, and I want to kind of emphasize that everything has been designed with the goal in mind to really be able to connect millions of chains over the years, right? And so the components are all reusable and they're all programmable. Uh, so at the very core of it, there's a Tendermint consensus, which, um, you know, all the functionality has been coded around it, and so it serves us really well purpose in order to uh, agree on the state of cross chain messages. That we're processing. Um, there is a layer of uh, kind of finality gadgets, which allows you to connect an arbitrary blockchain with as easy, uh, with few instructions, essentially, or a few commands on the network, right? So those finality gadgets, you can think of it, they can deal with uh, probabilistic chains, right? They can deal with chains with instant finality. Um, you just need to specify, you know, confirmation heights or basic parameters, and then you can onboard the chain. There is a layer of uh, kind of multi-party cryptography that's involved in it. Everything is pluggable. You can replace the cryptography, so you can use anything from multi-sigs like threshold signatures, BLS signatures. You know, you can use zero knowledge if you want, and so that serves as a building block and a component as well through the network. And on top of it, there is a layer of programmability that allows anybody to go and kind of use all these building blocks run commands on the network in order to onboard a new ecosystem as easy as possible, right? Um, so this is kind of at the core transport layer. All these components can be merged together and composed uh, to make interoperability scale. All right, awesome. So yeah, in terms of the network itself, we actually started to roll it out uh, you know, a couple of months ago. Uh, it's still in the early, I would say, phases of the rollout, but um, it's already onboarded you know, like a dozen of chains or so. Um, everything from Cosmos-based chains that can interact with IBC to various EVM chains, uh, you know, Ethereum, Avalanche, Phantom, Moonbeam, um, and so on and so forth. And, and like I said, because of the way the network is designed and the components are designed, it's pretty easy to actually keep on onboarding new chains and uh, keep on adding more connections. So kind of check out accelerscan.io. It has some, some interesting graphics and uh, kind of statistics statistics about uh, what we have processed today, but it's still kind of early days of the rollout. 
All right. So I'll, I'll mention a couple different functions, you know, on the on the network layer, and one uh, what I call is a universal asset transfer. So the basic idea is the following: whenever you compose in different ecosystems, some of them speak very different languages today, right? So you have Cosmos that speaks, you know, IBC. IBC is not extended to other ecosystems yet, so you potentially have to speak either a different message format or you have to translate one message into the other format, right? And so this is, at least for now, what we have done is kind of enable functionality to perform uh, transfers, you know, from many to many different ecosystems, right? So from many uh, Cosmos chains to many EVM chains and, and uh, vice versa. And the, uh, the basic kind of core premise of all this is, A, as more chains are added to the network, you get very strong compounding and networking effects, right? So you're not, con you're not fragmenting liquidity, you're not fr fragmenting connections. Every new connection that's added automatically gets to benefit from all other previously interconnected ecosystems, right? So it's not a pairwise connectivity in that model. Um, and underneath it, you have these strong kind of translation properties where Packets from, let's say, IBC can be translated into packets that, that are readable by, you know, EVM contracts and vice versa, right? So, uh, and the, because the translation happens at the network layer, it's all very optimized and it's all very cheap and it's all very effective and efficient. So you can program these things as well. Um, you can, um, so on the gateways that I mentioned earlier, you can actually call the gateway contracts uh, in order to send tokens. Or one of the features that we have rolled out, which you know, seems to be very interesting for the community, is to be able to get a deposit address where you can send a regular transaction to send your funds from one chain to another. Right? So think about it this way. In a lot of the bridging technology, you have to use things like MetaMask or smart wallets in order to actually use them. Right? Uh, that limits your user base you know, to MetaMask or smart wallets, which is you know, 20 to 30 million, um, you know, half of them from a Binance smart chain, if you want to go beyond that and allow your assets to be transferred through centralized exchanges, right, through dumb wallets, and get like to hundreds of millions of users, you can't require people to have MetaMask, right? Like that's a very limited factor. Um, so what Axel can do is you can call an API to get what we call as a deposit address, and the deposit address is a function of from where you want to go to where you want to end up, and what is the the destination address where you want to receive your funds. Right? And this address is a regular address that can be uh, computed to you to which a user can send funds from any wallet, right? from a centralized exchange, from a dumb exchange. It's a regular transaction that's executed. And the, way, the reason that it's enough is because of the Excel network layer, once you create this deposit address, you create sort of a path from a source to a destination. Right, so once that path is created, users can send an arbitrary transaction. Um, you don't have to decode like arbitrary, you know, complicated payloads and smart contracts and so on and so forth. So super excited about that feature. It gives you, you know, access to millions or hundreds of millions of users that were not previously available um, for bridging technologies in general. Awesome. So the second, uh, you know, big component of Axler, which we're rolling out now, is what we call is general message passing. All right. So the, the basic idea is that okay, tokens are great, but they're, um, in some sense, what they allow you to do is they allow you to move asset to the computation. Right. You have programs that are deployed on certain smart contracts. You're moving assets there to do things. With general message passing, you can go way beyond that. And what I call, what I can think of is, you can start thinking about paradigms where computations can move to the assets. Right? And state can move slowly across different blockchains. So as opposed to having to move the tokens, you can have functionality where the tokens or the assets are residing on a chain A. They're interacted through various smart contracts, and only state about those contracts or calls is then communicated to synchronize with other applications or other application logic that could, could, uh, could sit on different chains. So this is on the high level how this would work. Um, High-level diagram, if you have a user, you know, a user would interact with what we call as a uh, source chain um, application contract. So let's say you know, you're going from Ethereum to Avalanche, you would have a contract on the source chain. The user can send an arbitrary command to the contract. That contract can do anything you know, in a Turing complete world that you can think of, right? You can swap tokens, you can uh, you know, lock them in any shape and form. 
when the message needs to be relayed to other network, it, uh, the, the application layer logic can call it to the Axler gateway. The Axler gateway is a simply, you can think of it as an input and output you know, buffer or a queue to which you can read and write messages. Underneath all of this, there is the Axler decentralized proof of stake network that will uh, confirm the messages, uh, help you process them, relay them, um, and put them on the destination gateways, right? On destination gateway, from there you can call any other contract with any other payload, whether or not you transfer in tokens or you just synchronize in state across of your application. So you can do all of this and then the user can get their result in uh, you know, a different wallet or the same wallet or depending on how you execute the application. So super excited about this. Uh, you know, I think kind of in the Cosmos, I think similar you know, uh, trends to think about is through a kind of interchain accounts, right, that allow you to send transactions from uh, one chain to another. This is kind of going beyond that and going and uh, interacting with EVM chains. And we're thinking about ways that actually the two can compose with one another, which I think will be, you know, super, super exciting. Um, yeah, so... Uh, High level, let's go beyond tokens, let's enable Turing completeness right, for cross-chain communication, and that's what this allows us to do. All right, so yeah, you can think about building arbitrary applications from you know, uh, super apps, what I call, which is, uh, I think, super exciting uh, category of projects we're starting to see in the crypto space where things like wallets are allowing users to do more and more, right? Um, you know, um, purchasing, viewing NFTs, uh, kind of a trading, going from one chain to another, and all of that is going to be enabled through you know, interoperability stacks and cross-chain communication. Um, and I think this is definitely going to be an exciting category um, that we're going to see in the coming years. Beyond that, you can use your imagination to kind of think what to do with this uh, general message passing functionality. Everything from NFT transfers, uh, you know, cross-chain automated market makers, gaming, and so on and so forth. And we're seeing some, some early uh, use cases and uh, exciting stuff for, for instance, like a first cross-chain NFT marketplace that's been built by our community that allows people to, you know, that have tokens on different chains to kind of purchase NFTs that may be hosted somewhere else across the ecosystem, right? So um, kind of super, super exciting use cases. All right, so I think I'll end it here. That was a quick talk. So if you want to follow us, you know, check out Docs, sign up for Discord. We're always there to answer any questions, and I'll be handing around. And, uh, you know, I can probably, I don't know how much time we have, but I can probably take a couple of questions now. I have one minute. All right, one minute is good for 10 questions. <laughs> Let's go quickly. Anybody? <laughs> All right. Yep. Uh, awesome. Well, thanks, everyone. We'll see you around.